Hey everyone, welcome to the KE Report in a company update with Banyan Gold. I am chatting with Tara Christie, President and CEO of Banyan Gold, and also joined by the Vice President of Exploration, Duncan McKay. Banyan is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol BYN and the OTCQB under the symbol BYAGF. This is going to be an exploration update really getting a progress report on this 30,000 meter program underway at the ORMAC project. Just to remind everybody, that is the project that has 7 million ounces at the power line deposit, as well as the airstrip deposit. Part of this ongoing drill program to expand and further define these areas. Tara, let's start off with you. As I said, let's get a bit of a progress report here. How far are you through that 30,000 meter program? Well, Corey, as of today, we're just over the halfway mark at 16,000 meters, 61 meters drilled. You know, we've started in April. It's been a really exciting year. We've had three drills turning with amazing productivity, really focused this year on what we think is going to add the most value, you know, adding adding ounces where that and following up on those high grade results from last year, continuing to get expand some of those higher grade zones at power line and stepping out a little bit. So I'm really excited about what this year has to come. You know, we've been shipping results, so we're fairly soon going to start seeing assay results. And of course, this core, you can see the mineralization. So having been to site in the last couple of weeks, I'm really excited about what what we're going to see through July and August and into September. So Duncan, your first time on the show, more of the geology angle, I want to bring you in because news released a little while ago, I think end of April, provided a bit of an update that said you saw some visible gold at some initial holes at Airstrip. Can you take us through the importance of this VG that you've seen that the news release also says this was the first time seeing VG, I believe, at Airstrip? Yeah, so the the hole we drilled at Airstrip was following up on an intersection from last year, hole 590, that had really strong high-grade mineralization in our, our main scar and horizons in contact with the Felsic Dyke in the Airstrip deposit. And this was following up on that, an off-angle hole to sort of look further out, try to test the continuity of this very high grade zone. And we actually saw visible gold within the scarn itself. So typically when we see visible gold at RMAC, it's in the power line deposit in our discordant sheeted veins. And so seeing it in the scarn shows that this scarn can be extremely, you know, very high grade in itself when we're actually in this sort of mineralized domain that we're starting to track and try to We'll get more drill holes into to see how it holds together and seeing nice continuity of it in that contact zone with the Felsic Dyke. Now, can you simplify this for us where you're seeing VG in the SCARN mineralization, but this is an intrusion related deposit. So, how does this all tie together? Yeah. So, <clears throat> going back to sort of the beginning, this is a reduced, or we, the hypothesis is a reduced intrusion related gold deposit. We see really strong correlations between bismuth and tellurium with our gold mineralization, which is characteristic of that style of deposit. We also see sort of the typical, you know, narrow sheeted quartz veins sort of cross-cutting most of the stratigraphy, carrying most of the gold in power line. In the airstrip area, it's a little bit different because we actually have one of these potential, you know, intrusions that may be the fluid source cutting through the stratigraphy, but it's cutting through calcareous metasediments, which are sort of this uh, perfect geochemical host for a specific type of mineralization where we get a lot of pyrotite, strong arsenopyrite mineralization, and then that calcosilicate alteration of the host rock is also sort of the, the same fluid event that causes the gold to precipitate out within this scarred horizon. So it's sort of this little geochemical trap right next to the potential fluid source or also heat source in that felsic dike. So it's a different expression of sort of the same fluid system, just you know, based on what type of host rock you have, it sort of expresses this slightly differently. And if you recall, Corey, last year, that intersection that we had with that that dike in the metasediments was only 65 meters deep. So, you know, part of our focus has been going up dip and towards the surface, as well as trying to trace that that intersection across airstrips. So it's been a pretty exciting year drilling some of those holes. Okay, some of that drilling already happened at airstrip. What about power line too? We've seen in at least last year's news, 
some of these high grade areas being better isolated? How much drilling do you know has gotten into power line after those airstrip holes? Yeah, so for power line, there are a couple areas sort of in the eastern part that we were testing as well. But off the top of my head, I think about a thousand meters out in one area that we wanted to look at a relatively high grade area. A lot of our drilling has been focused on what was at the time sort of logistically advantageous with the you know early start in April, taking advantage of the snow and the frozen ground to get to spots that are a bit swampier. Now with sort of everything warming up, where we've shifted back to sort of concentrating rate on our line where we can drill pretty much any time. There's sort of good infrastructure and easy access. And so we've got two holes, I believe two holes into sort of the core area that we're following up on from last year and continuing to drill there. And recall, Corey, last year, we really focused on drilling off so that we would get indicated in our next resource. And that drilling really is informed where and how the high grade is is distributed and has been a real really key for the targeting that we're doing this year and what we're going to drill now in the next months with now that we're on to power line drilling where where it's easy to do through the summer you know we're really getting focused on those higher grade zones which you know will be part of a potential starter pit when we when we get our PEA out so Tara I know we don't have any results yet but talk to us about the process of when this drilling is completed or as it gets completed and as you get some results back, how quickly you can incorporate that into your overall database and your, I guess, deposit modeling. Well, I'll let Duncan speak to that as well. But, you know, that's one of the huge upgrades that we've done this year is to change over our logging system and our database system so that effectively as we log and as we get results, it's going into our modeling system real time, which is going to improve our targeting and our ability to use that data. And it's a it's a pretty major upgrade. It's it's probably why we were a little bit delayed in in getting our core logged. But, you know, as you grow up as a company, you need to get your systems and your and, and how your data is stored and your QA, QC commensurate with the size and scale of the company and the size and scale of the companies that, that are looking around the Yukon. So we're really excited about what that gives. And that's one of Duncan's great skills is, is modeling of this deposit. And, you know, we've got a lot of stronger control now lithologically on, on the mineralization. And I, I don't know, Duncan, do you want to add to that? No, that was a pretty good summary. Yeah, a bit more specifics. Yeah, we were able to basically the geos are checking out their holes during the day logging and then able to check them in back at night and it's updated to our central database. And then basically I can update that directly from the database in Leapfrog. Same with as we get our results back from the lab. The After QAQC, they go into the database and I can get those into Leapfrog basically as soon as they're available. The great thing about using Leapfrog as well is I can easily update one or two intersections as soon as we have that information. So it gives us that sort of real-time geologic modeling capability, which has actually already this year proved useful when we've had a slight offset in something and we're expecting, expecting lithologies where they maybe didn't end up being and were able to adjust our plan accordingly. Duncan, because it is your first time on the show, and I know you're relatively new with the team at Banyan, let's get a bit of your background then when it comes to the exploration side of things, who you worked with, and how that's fitting into the stage that Banyan is at already with this resource, looking to de-risk it and potentially build some sort of mine plan later on down the road. Yeah, so I've got over 15 years experience in mineral exploration. Most of it has come in the territories, predominantly in Northwest Territories and Nunavut. Early career worked a lot on sort of early stage to medium stage exploration programs, then spent time with Yamana Gold working on projects in Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, and helping out their teams in South America with modeling. And that's sort of where I really honed my expertise in advanced uh, modeling and deposit modeling, sort of at the late exploration through feasibility and into mine stage modeling. So a lot of background in having that robust geologic you know, information to hang your mineralized domains on. So you can really take full advantage in the modeling process of delineating the high-grade zones within a deposit. Yeah. 
So what are you seeing at this deposit then? Where do you personally, as a geologist and the vice president of exploration, what are you most excited about? Where do you see this drill program really progressing the company? We have a, a very large, uh, you know, mineral resource estimation at, you know, 7 million ounces. What I'm really excited about is these high grade zones that we're able to start delineating. They hang together, like in airstrip, they hang together very well. And then in power line, we're starting to delineate some additional high grade zones based on the stratigraphy and the structural information we've collected, as well as lithogeochemical information. And starting to test sort of the continuity of some of these zones and seeing that they seem to hang together reasonably well as well. So I think that ability to upgrade or potentially upgrade some of these high grade zones, I'm hoping that it's going to help the deposit really shine as you know it is sort of this large low grade deposit when you look just at the base mineral resource estimate, but we do have these nice high grade portions that are relatively near surface. So yeah, with the working towards our PEA later this year, I think there's opportunity to help look at some of these starter pit areas. And with this drill program, we're sort of focusing on where can we improve these portions of the deposit as well. Okay. So what we've talked about so far is the high grade definition aspect of this drill program and this near resource expansion. But there's also this regional discovery potential that you're looking at, testing some targets that don't have resources around them across your land package. Duncan, give us an update here. What's going on with the regional exploration? Just as general, I've always, even when doing sort of working with mine sites, I always, always tried to keep the roughly you know 10% drill budget guideline for regional exploration. When we do have you know the money to do the drilling and the drill budget for it, I like to try and test some you know interesting targets. We have a lot of cover on the RMAC project, and probably 95% of it is largely unexplored aside from geophysics and soils. So following up on you know, geophysical information that we have, soil trends that we've identified and going to be starting some soil sampling relatively soon as well to try and find interesting targets sort of in the wider Ormac area just to fully test the potential of this property. Now, this regional exploration, some of these other targets, are they similar to what power line, what airstrip looks like? Yeah, so that's that's sort of the question. Is looking at the the geophysics and the soil samples, trying to determine are we looking, and then not having a lot of information on the strike extent of some of the stratigraphy testing. You know, are we seeing the same stratigraphic units? Can we expect the same mineralization? Obviously, if we're stepping out a long trend of our ORMAC and airstrip deposits, we're looking for that same style of mineralization, but sort of not leaving anything anything out in our sort of targeting. I have a background in orogenic gold as well and also did my master's in rare earth element and specialty metal deposits. So I've seen a lot of different st- deposit styles. So I'll always just keeping an eye out for anything that might be slightly out of the norm, especially on this project where as far as reduced intrusion related gold deposits go, RMAC and Powerline do present slightly differently than sort of the typical deposit model. And it's just based on what type of post rock you have, how it presents, and what sort of alteration and mineralization styles you get. All right. Thanks, Duncan. Tara, final comments then. Look, you've done a lot of drilling. Any insights on when we're going to start getting some results and any other news that investors can keep an eye out for? Well, we'll have results when they're ready. Unfortunately, you have to actually wait and make sure you've done the QA, QC. But I think people know there's some big events coming up. We're really focused on on making sure that we can communicate our great story and do it well. So, you know, we will have some results here through July, August, all the way probably through till November with this drill program, maybe even later. So there'll be lots of news flow through us for us and hopefully some other exciting catalysts that we're working on. We'll have a, a PEA in fourth quarter where we We'll earn 100% in the McQuestion project. So it's going to be an exciting year, Corey. So look forward to hearing from us through the next few months. All right. Tara, Duncan, thank you very much for this update. Again, Tara Christie, President and CEO of Banyan Gold, and Duncan McKay, Vice President Exploration. Please, everyone, keep sending me your questions. And as we, I guess, in the near term, get some drill results, I'll follow up with the company to see how those are playing into the bigger picture. So Tara Duncan, thank you very much for the update today. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, thanks for having us.